Uh, in the meantime, let's start with the kind of introduction or interaction. Molina, what you have did it in last week? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, great, great. Okay. So, uh, Samiksha? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't worry, I'll try to cover up like as basic as possible and I'll try to summarize those things aspect as well. Okay, so then uh, just to start, before this is starting uh, this lecture, uh, I just want to understand from any of you guys what the need of the Dhaka, okay? Uh, before proceeding this, I just want to understand what the uh, real problem does tra Docker tries to solve. Anyone? It's a wrong answer or welcome. It's not, uh, it's not, it's okay. It's, it's a kind of debate that we can do it. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of, but it's much more than, okay, so why not go for like a, a virtual VM? Virtual machine is the concept, like why they are not uh, using that? Is there any idea about that? Uh -huh. hmm. So first of all, let me share my screen with you. Uh, and uh, by the time uh, it might be possible, I would not be able to see your chats. So please bear with me, okay? And if anything like that, you can uh, try to unmute or ask me questions in between. Uh, it's, your guys are totally open to ask uh, anything. So uh, let, let me share my screen first of all. I'm just going to present my screen and I'm just going to start with the um, the question why uh, we are do using the Docker and then I uh, quickly uh, go through a kind of PPT that I have created and if time permits, we'll also do a kind of deployment in our um, AWS environment that I have created. So anybody just type yes, no, that uh, hey, are you able to see my screen then so that I can proceed further. Okay, great. So it's a whiteboard that I have opened. Okay, so why Docker, if we talk about why? Okay, so um, suppose that uh, uh, at once upon a time, uh, there was a developer who used to um, dev create a pom.xml and there was a, a list of dependencies were there, okay? And these are the dependencies, let's say, in the form of jar files and uh, um, different uh, kind of versions, okay? And they have maintained. And uh, this was the only one part of that. Uh, not only uh, this, this is the, let's say, this is the kind of things where the Java was there only, okay? Or use the Java. But outside of this environment, uh, suppose that this developer is running on the Windows machine, okay? and is carrying, uh, let's say 1.8 or 1.7. And this uh, guy has uh, worked, it was working fine, everything working fine for him in his local environment. And he pushes the code into get the Git repository, okay, Git repository or in a common repository store and asks and send a beautiful email to his manager. Hey, I have did it everything. You can pull up this data in your local environment. And I personally personally feel that it would be working for you. 
okay the guy or managers asked to tester pull up all those data into his local environment and test it but when this guy is going to test it the story was different he was working with some uh, different version of os from here okay whatever the version of the os over here it's slightly different from that okay and due to these compatibility issues whatever the software this guy has delivered is not working properly for him okay so this was a quite challenging because uh, both guys are correct this the developer guy is also correct in his his own terms and the tester who is testing he is also correct but who is the culprit the culprit the real culprit is his environment okay whatever the environment they are running upon this was the culprits okay um still uh, there was a, a slight solution of it what they could do uh, we can they can define a kind of virtual machine over there and uh, i'll tell you the drawbacks of the virtual machine and then they can share the exactly that and they same can access uh, at the same point of time but there was a draw, virtual machine came up with the draw some kind of drawbacks although it supports um, uh, or it enables many features but it also comes with a lot of drawbacks okay now move on okay if we talk about let's move on the new things okay so uh, the uh, these docker guys what it does okay docker says um, hey developer whenever you are developing something please do don't expect at yourself let me uh, tell you uh, you can define me whatever you need to run this particular application in your environment so what we have to create we have to create a one docker file and whatever the images we, uh, he says that i have a very standard repository somewhere okay so let's say you need a linux i'll pull up it from somewhere and the correct version for you if you need a java for the environment i'll pull up it from somewhere but that is the authenticated one and we, there would be not kind of any version mismatch and let me know what is the entry point of your program okay so considering this if uh, these all are the things are the defined and uh, and once you have dockerized this thing and you can create the image of out of it you can what do you can do it you can create a image out of it okay and once you have created your image what you can do it you can push it somewhere uh, there is in aws is called acr and uh, in the docker it have a docker hub okay it's a common repository uh, common re uh, repository for their okay what uh, it does it just uh, keep the central is a kind of central repository like maven maintains it for the java uh, repository or ja, um, maven repository system okay so uh, the developer too or you can say tester this if he wants to he can pull up this image and run locally okay and it's it start working okay so but how they are behaving the main thing is that how they are behaving how it's working uh for his local so what it does internally how it does it's a kind working uh let me go through first how the vm is working and then i'll go to how the docker is working okay uh there is a concept of hypervisor hypervisor okay there are the two kinds of uh, hypervisor basically there's a type one which is for the industry uses uh industries or enterprise organization are using the type 1 and there is a kind of type 2 as well which is mainly used for the you can say a testing purposes or learning purpose okay so what is the hypervisor is all about okay if we talk about what is the hypervisor is something um let's say uh it's hypervisor is a firmware this is a firmware or which directly bind with your hardware 
there are the two kinds of software. It's a one, one is the update, one is the firmware, one is the software. You normally get in your mobile uh, two kinds of update. One is the firmware update, and then there's a software update, or you can say Android update. So uh, how the software works in your hardware. So it's not like that you uh, any, um, uh, any software is, uh, can work directly with your hardware, like Samsung or MI or Apple, any kind of mobiles, what they provide, they, were, uh, they directly write a certain program, okay, which directly attach the hardware and that is known as firmware, or you can say kind of uh, uh, kind of directly uh, hypervisor, and they further uh, in, can be installed of our, they're going to come your software, or you can say Android software. Let's try again. Let me give the example. Uh, there you can buy uh, two kind of laptops. Which uh, first of all, which one which comes with the pre-installed software like uh, uh, Windows. Second category is come up with the only bare bone. But still, there are certain programs. Suppose that even you have put up the pen, uh, pen drive, someone is already sits there to detect whether the program uh, or your pen drives contain certain kind of programs, okay? Certain kind of program, which is a category of the software installation. So it's basically kind of software bridge between actual software to your actual hardware. So this is kind of the hypervisor. Okay, now, as I talked about, there are the two categories of, uh, uh, two categories of, uh, you can say hypervisor. So let's say this is uh, the hardware for you, okay? And uh, further, um, it's in a hyper, uh, it's an OS. For example, in I'm talking about a specifically type two, whatever we are using is specifically for the learning purposes, training purposes, and all those stuff. Okay. And this is our hardware. Let's say it's a hardware. This is our OS, which is known as host OS because we are serving many users. Okay. And after that, there is a hypervisor is being installed. This is known as the hypervisor. Okay. And on the top of this, we can use the virtual machines, VMs, VM, okay? These are the VMs. Suppose that uh, you guys are all might be, if you are using the Linux machine for the learning purposes or Ubuntu, you have or used Oracle uh, virtual machine, Oracle virtual box or something like that, where you can create a multiple, uh, your multiple, uh, streams or your, you can think of the multiple machine, Windows machine, different kind of machine. But ultimately, the thing is that you have one hardware. Okay, this is the one hardware. And out of it, we have a category of, uh, uh, like say, our OS, which could be anything like a Windows or Linux or anything. And on the top of that, we have installed the virtual. And these are kind of different environments. This could be the Windows server, this could be the Linux server, this could be any, anything kind of activity, okay? So now coming to the, like, uh, uh, what's the challenge? Like, uh, what is the, uh, VM was working fine, but what is, the, what is the use of the Docker then? Okay, what is the, it was working fine, because if you want to create your environment, you can create it, still you can run it program in some different uh, ways and, but the challenge was that, the major challenge was that one thing, let's say, uh, it could contain, uh, uh, let's say 16 GB of memory, 16 GB of RAM, okay? And let's say we have divided uh, four, four, and let's say one more and four, four, okay? And if we, someone is using these kind of program, let's say someone or, um, using these programs, okay? Someone is using. For a certain period of time, uh, four, uh, there is no request at the four, okay? So what will happen uh, is still it is idle, these resources will not be shared among other. So this was the uh, very big challenge. It means it's uh, occupied. Even if it is not doing uh, anything, 
they you, we must have some friend even they are not doing anything they can't support you so in that category of uh, <clears throat> this vm was there okay uh, now the docker has improved this thing uh, consider to the similar picture the only thing or you can say major two things has been changed first of all uh, vm was too heavy they have to be their entire uh, library or you can say chunk of files chunk of files that they uh, they consider their own file it could be in 500 mbs or that kind of file size should be there okay that is the one. so uh, one is the file size and secondly was the issue it, it is is the nature of not sharing the resources sharing resources so how the docker has de dealt with it okay what docker does it don't copy suppose that it wants to take the uh, linux version okay linux version or depending software most of the files which are the common one it is uh, uh, pull up or is is sharing by its host suppose uh, it's a host uh, uh, it we having the host um, uh, host computer or host software okay most of the resources is shared by the uh, here itself and whatever the left, okay, only the delta would be uh, pick up, only the dual delta would be pick up from actual, uh, you can say actual server, or you can say actual uh, actual thing. Let's say 95% of the files would be provided from the low uh, host uh, itself and rest remaining only the 5% of uh, <clears throat> the details would be uh, kind of pick up from somewhere else, let's say. Okay, that's one thing. And not only this, it also believe in sharing, sharing of the resources. Uh, suppose that these are the two servers, or you can say Docker uh, containers, which are not being actually used. Okay. So what it does now, if it has the 16, uh, depending upon the usage, it would sharing its resources. So that is um, the major uh, role play of the Docker. And it is a uh, very, uh, uh, very widely used uh, nowadays. So that is the whole all picture of about the uh, Docker. So let me open my PPT and uh, let me uh, uh, let me go through this thing as much as possible. Okay, so I will try to cover the deployment using the Docker most of the past. Okay, so okay, who I learned Docker. Truly, Docker is a time-saving tool that is easy to learn and integrate into the, your environment. There is no reason to avoid learning Docker as it will benefit almost every <coughs> server room to uh, some degree. It is an open source in nature, also means that a benefit can be realized without a large investment, okay? Docker is open source. Uh, first of all, it says you know uh, you are not required to pay somebody uh, for the same thing. Okay, Docker is an awesome and powerful tool that has uh, the IT world is scrambling and take the advantage of its feature. You can see um, the percentage how it's being used in among the market. Um, Sixty-five percent used to Docker to deliver uh, the development agility and 48% uh, uses the Docker to control the app and environment. 41% is specifically used to Docker to achieve app portability that we have talked about portability and uh, 75, 8% somewhere web apps, 75% web API, app server. So these are the some uh, general, uh, uh, you can say, um, uh, the, uh, you can say statistics that we have uh, in the market that's we is going on. Um, okay. Here are the five reasons uh, to learn the Docker. Okay, there is a five reason uh, why you should go for, uh, if you talk about why should I learn for the Docker. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, Dockerize app. Okay, and do not require their own operating system. If you have put something, if you have, uh, suppose that a resource crunches, you have only the worst one EC2 instance. Okay. Uh, I'm really sorry. There is something is uh, going wrong with my uh, board, so that's why. And we have to dockerize it, so we can uh, dockerize uh, multiple uh, 
uh, multiple instances and the same uh, uh, like thing. Okay. Okay. Something like that. Okay. We have a kind of category. Each dockerized app gets its own uh, set of dependency and everyone have a kind of same set of dependencies. Uh, most of heavy lifting is already done. Uh, major of the things has already been taken care of. Controlling the Docker containers can be fully automated. Most thing is really not require any kind of manual intervention. Uh, anybody can do it by their own self. Okay. Uh, now question is why uh, every software developer should go to learn the Docker? Uh, because the Docker is uh, not just another tool, it's a game changer. And you believe that uh, that's every programmer, it's a Java. Developer C or web uh, coding in the JavaScript all should learn the Docker. Okay. The first and the foremost reason for the Docker simplifies uh, the development and the deployment of the software of the project. For example, you can deploy the Java microservices in the same way as the Node application. Once uh, you have wrapped them in a container, it's just like a Maven made it uh, easy to maintain the project dependency. Uh, Maven is used to, uh, well, like I said, dependencies on all those. Docker takes care of another level by building the application, okay, and the container. Okay. Now the next slide is, uh, what is the hypervisor that we have already talked about? It's a first program, uh, which is directly going to interact uh, with your hardware. So hypervisor make it possible to use more of uh, use more of a system available resources uh, providing the greater IT mobility. Since the guest VMs are independent of the host hardware, this means they can be easily moved uh, between different servers uh, because the multiple virtual machines can uh, run off. Okay, of the one of the physical server with a hypervisor. A hypervisor reduces uh, space, energy, and main maintenance requirement. Okay. How the hypervisor works, as already talked about, it's uh, directly hypervisor supports the creation and management of the virtual machines by abstracting a computer software from its hardware. Hypervisor makes virtualization possible by translating requests between the physical and virtual resources. Uh, bare uh, metal hypervisors are the sometimes embedded into the firmware at the same level as it's a uh, motherboard basics, important uh, output system, BIOS to enable the operating system on a computer. And that we have already talked about, okay? Uh, the differences uh, hypervisor are the OS agnostic, Docker supposed to be only the Linux, consume up to one minute, uh, this Docker is very fast. Uh, dual OS layer between the extra security depend upon the Supporting Linux kernel, consuming the gigabyte of space. Uh, Docker containers are very lightweight, okay, and can run multiple instances simultaneously, simultaneously, and support the multiple application instances, okay. Uh, how the Docker different from other container technology? There is there is other container technology as well. Docker containers are very easy to deploy into uh, any of the cloud platform, AWS, Azure, or GCP, whatever it is. Uh, it can get more application running on the same hardware uh, when uh, compared to other technologies because uh, it's only pull up the Delta. It doesn't pull up the entire software for it. Uh, it makes it so easy for the developer to quickly create uh, the ready to run, containerized application. It makes the uh, managing and deploying the application. These things we have covered, what is the Docker registry? If we talk about the Docker registry is in a storage that we have talked about, uh, ECR. Um, okay, ECR or in a Docker hub, if we talk about Docker hub as well, okay. Okay, Docker registry is a storage distribution system for the name Docker images. Okay, same images might have uh, multiple different versions. 
uh, like uh, which version we want to uh, run it in locally or in our <clears throat> application. And uh, nowadays, every deployment in the real world is happening to only this, okay? Uh, a Docker registry is organized into the Docker repository where a repository holds all the version of the specific images, okay? The registry allows Docker users to pull up the images locally as well as uh, push new images to registry. Um, these are nothing but it's a Docker hub that we have talked about. Uh, however, it is possible to run on-premises open source Docker registry distribution. Uh, that we have already talked about. It's a kind of like a Maven, like a Maven repository. It's a just similar way we can create uh, the compiled version of our uh, program with the um, with the collections of uh, environment uh, dependencies. Okay, and uh, that that way we can do it. Okay. Uh, namespace just like a package is a kind of segregation. Is a kind of grouping. If we want to group it, we can group it. So that says all about the name spaces. Uh, is it possible to use the JSON instead of the YAML for the Docker? YAML is superset of the JSON so that any JSON file should be valid uh, YAML. So to use a JSON file with a compose specifically for a file name to use it. Yes, so the answer is yes, we can do it. Okay. Uh, these are the basic, basic commands. And just we, you, I believe that you have already gone through, but uh, very quickly I'll uh, try to cover all those things. Uh, very basic commands of the creation of the <coughs> Docker container. So, uh, so what are the process of creating a Docker container? Okay, create a uh, both container. So Docker uh, Docker creating a command will create a new command line from. Let's say we want to create a new container. So Docker create container create and that is the name of uh, uh, it's just a weak on kind of exposing uh, your uh, port. Uh, it's a left side is your internal uh, container port and right side is the way you are going to uh, access your application. Okay, that is the port is going to be exposed. If you don't have a NGNX Alpine, it's a nothing but Alpine is a another flavor or light flavor of the Linux. Uh, images in your local Docker images repository, it will download automatically if it has already, but it's a kind of dependency, NGNX, Alpine in your local, if it is not there already in your uh, local environment, like a Maven, if I believe you are already are familiar with the Maven, uh, how it does works. So assumption that if it has already existed for the same version, it will not download. Uh, but if it is <clears throat> not there, it's go and look for those kind of softwares which are dependent upon, and then it pull up uh, in your local repository and then going to uh, create environment for you, okay? Uh, inspect image, if you look at the list of the images in your system, uh, you will now see the NGN Alpenix. So if you want to see, so you can uh, see this uh, has been downloaded at your local, okay? So inspect container, <clears throat> note that the container is not running, okay? So that you won't see in the container list unless unless you use the flag A, okay? So it's a docker ps hyphen A, that's the command is being used to see the container. Uh, let's start the container and see what's happened. So docker ps A, that's the command that we have used, okay? So, the container has been started and now we can try to access uh, the to the local host. So we have a server which is uh, known as the nginx. So it's where by, by default uh, we can see what we have are being there. Okay. Uh, we can modify the content of the HTML and that can it still will be available for the use. Okay. So create the images from the container. If we have already a container, we can create uh, create an image out of it and that could be uh, <clears throat> published in the environment. Or we can create a group, uh, we can create a local, uh, another tag, we can tag them and all those things. So there, if you want to tag existing image that we have created or anything like, so we can, uh, let's say, uh, using, the, using the Docker tag, this is the command that uh, we can name the image we have just created. 
uh, we need the image ID for the command so that the image uh, ID listed above is uh, our command will be. So uh, if we want to tag it, it means just a kind of uh, having two uh, repository of the same time. Uh, and if we have look at the in, uh, index of the images again, we can see uh, none were replaced. So we actually come, uh, we use the complicated tags here uh, with the version number and all those uh, other fixing of the tags command. <clears throat> but uh, for our uh, example, we have just created an image with the meaningful name, uh, created images with the tags. So uh, you can use the, uh, you can also use tag the image as a create by adding another argument to the end of the command line like this. Okay, so we can use also this thing. Uh, deleting the original container. So as we have started Docker, we can see the still uh, running the using uh, Docker PS command. We can see how what are the running. Uh, let's stop the Docker container and let's see the current running uh, uh, and uh, delete it. Okay. So we have stopped this server, okay? And the command is issued for the RM. RM command is used to remove uh, that particular container. If we, if we list uh, the contain, uh, Docker containers, we should have the none now, okay? Uh, now let's create a new container based on the images that we have created and started it, okay? So let's, we, have create, we are trying to create a new instance of it, okay? Okay, uh, note that the Docker is um, Docker is uh, equivalent uh, for the executing the Docker creates the followed by the Docker start. And let's just skip all these things. Uh, look at the running container. If the Docker running container can be displayed using this particular command and we can see it over here. We have, okay. As you can see the index.ms page is now showing the hi mom message like just we wanted to stop the container hi mom before we are moving to the next section. Okay, consider your options. There are the multiple options that you can pass it on that I'm skipping. Okay, uh, set authorship. Okay, create chemistry. We like uh, in the git commit messages and all those things, what we are proceeding uh, uh, further. That way we can proceed. Let's say you want to commit some message to remind yourself what the images is all about, uh, what the state of the container was at the time the uh, image was made. So uh, you can put the commit messages. There is a message option that you can uh, include that information uh, to execute this command. So these are the information. This is the basic NGNX uh, images like something like that. Okay. Um, using the image name, we can, we, could, we can look at the history uh, uh, use name. We can look at the history of the Docker image uh, to see our messages. Okay. If we want to see how the, uh, this particular image or the uh, we have talked about how it progressed. So if we have if, if we have a very good practice of making uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> making kind of uh, uh, kind of like uh, say uh, the history of what we have done so far, what we have the changes we are making. So it's a very uh, really good practice. Okay. Uh, notice that we uh, see the entire history here. Uh, first, uh, and the first the entry in the forum of our commit of the running container. The first line is listed our commit messages in the rightmost column, and let's remove the image and then check the other options as well. Um, commit without pause. We can. Uh, that's another command that I'm not going through because we have to cover the labs as well. Uh, change configuration. What are the changes are there? Uh, the left. Uh, these are the configurations that we <coughs> could do. If, if later on, if you require this PPT, I can share with you guys. Um, now that stop uh, ngx base, stop and all those commands out there without this. this uh, okay, creating a Docker images conclusion that we are let's talking about the uh, Docker commit uh, sub command is very useful uh, for the diagnostic activity if you want to diagnose our program and bootstrapping a new images from an existing container. Um, so how the, uh, how above uh, uh, there are the many helpful options are available to Docker CLI has many powerful commands. Uh, if you like, uh, if you like, you can explore some of them here. Um, this is the 
post that I have uh, I've taken from there. Okay, you can go for there. Okay, uh, normally uh, let's talk about uh, what's the common life cycle of a uh, particular uh, particular uh, life container. So first is is being containers being created. Um, container is running. Okay. Uh, container could be paused for some time or just like a life cycle of the thread or we have killed it and then it's going to be stopped. So this is the normal uh, life cycle of a, uh, uh, of a, any con Docker container. Okay. Okay. So uh, images flows of the detailed Docker container life cycle. So this is the kind of detailed life cycle that we have talked about and uh, uh, let's uh, let's start with the create, okay? And we have a kind of create container, uh, Docker create name that's we are going to create it, okay? Once that that has been created, um, uh, Docker create, sorry, Docker created, and then Docker start, and Docker remove would be destroying, uh, destroy, and that we have talked about uh, it's a running, and if we want to Docker kill. These are the command, docker stop, docker restarts, docker pause. So these are the command and depending upon the, uh, depending upon the command, there are the <coughs> several action has been mentioned over there. These are the few commands that docker container, run docker container, pause container, unpause if you want to do it, start container, stop container, restart container and kill, kill container and destroy. <coughs> Containers. So these are the some uh, like uh, these are the list of the commands that we every developer must know: Docker images, Docker ps, ps hyphen a. Um, these are a list of the commands. Okay, that you must go through. Uh, how do uh, you do you scale your Docker container? Please unmute yourself. Uh, mute yourself, everybody. I believe someone has unmuted. Please go for the mute, everybody. I request you, everybody, go for on mute. Okay. <clears throat> so, how do you scale uh, as your Docker container? Uh, okay. So, you can scale your Docker container with the Docker Compose. Okay. Docker Compose is uh, nothing because uh, if you are doing issuing, it's a it's a kind of set of uh, it's, a, it's a YAML file or it's a, where you can. Um, configure multiple uh, your repositories or you can say uh, <clears throat> Docker images and that can be pulled up all those information in a one central file and depending upon the instruction, it will create a lot of uh, Docker containers for you. So that's uh, nothing but it's a kind of, uh, it's a kind of, uh, <clears throat> kind of information uh, collected in a kind of uh, image or you can say in a file and it's a kind of YML file basically. And it's, we just uh, establish the relationship between them and then we can <coughs> uh, start it, okay? Okay, then we can, um, we, uh, uh, then we will be uh, able to scale up uh, the Docker container is using the Docker Compose scale command. Uh, Docker Compose uh, scale command provides a flexibility to desire a container Container same configuration, but just as by specifying the numbers, so that when you are scaling the Docker container, you are letting the Docker daemon assign a free port for the Docker uh, container that you are starting upon. Okay, um, when scaling any services, it is mandatory to run OMR services. So, uh, like these are the <clears throat> basic configuration that you have to do it. Uh, like uh, you must go understand the Docker Compose. It's a, it's a kind of command that you look for. We'll definitely going to uh, uh, the command and the file that we are going to use it. And definitely the scale of factor. Uh, how does uh, the communication happens between the Docker client and Docker co container? So this is the image uh, that is showing how uh, the things are being uh, co communicated. Docker uses the client server architecture and Docker client and daemon can uh, run on the same time, Docker client and the same. Uh, these are the things, uh, this is the nothing but a daemon, daemon which daemon thread, as you already guys are aware about if you are coming from the background of the Java, 
uh, daemon is a thread which is continuously running and its actual purpose is not to solve any real issue but to support supporting threads so that kind of uh, <clears throat> the daemon thread is all about uh, the uh, if you talk about the docker client and daemon communication using the rest api uh, over the unix socket on a network so it's something like that docker host is something uh, we having the running, uh, these are the container that has been, uh, we have created. We have to build upon the images. Uh, images are nothing but it is pulled from the registry. Uh, it will be pulled, first be pulled from for the local. And if it has been made one, uh, one uh, container, and then it would be not re-downloading from the server again. It would be actually uh, <coughs> being reutilized from, um, a local server itself so this means once it is being downloaded it's not being downloaded again it will um it will just uh, re reuse it the other uh, other container will reuse it okay uh what are the command uh, can you run to export a docker image as an archive so these are the command uh, that we have uh, used okay exporting to a container we are using the docker export command basically and there are the options okay can a pause container can be removed from the docker yes uh, a pause container can be removed from uh, <coughs> docker we can unpause by killing the container okay we can whatever the pause state that we have to kill it but it's a quite nice if we if we docker remove remove in the final command to remove the container also strictly speaking even I I call Docker unpause just before Docker uh, this one, uh, someone may unpause. Okay, the container between those and command. So it's you can think of it's uh, working behind the scene. Okay, um, one uh, another two differences between copy command and add command. What are the difference between them? Uh, copy and uh, add commands are almost uh, diff uh, same uh, with a slight modification. Uh, with uh, so, what are the diff differences are? Okay, uh, copy takes an SRC or uh, you can say source and destination. It uh, lets you the copy to the local or you can say a directory from your host or machine. Okay, into uh, <coughs> the image itself. Okay, um, add is give you just two additional uh, features apart from that. You can use the URL, means you can use the uh, arts outside of uh, the, your repository. Second, you can extract from the source directly into the destination. These are the two additional features that has been provided. Um, can a can, uh, container restart by itself if your application detects issue? Yes, it can. Uh, you can easily have to container restart itself. The two important thing are the hyphen hyphen restart flags must be there and then application exists when it detects an issue with the restart policy you can control uh, the docker whenever the command exists okay um uh, uh, what are the purpose of the up run and start command that we have uh, you already you guys or no i'm not going to into details here are the list of the docker commands this is uh, quite common for running start uh, build pull push export execution run and executing command search attach and commit okay what are the basic requirement for uh, the docker to run on a any system okay so basically basically we have at least minimum uh, 500 mb or less than that or available ram uh, this is the minimum requirement and these are the kind of uh, set of requirement that we have okay uh i don't know what happened to this marker but anyway uh what are the approach to log into the docker system so we can uh, use the docker login command okay if we have wanted to do it and it's by default logging to um <clears throat> you can think of uh, actual your uh, docker hub uh, username and password and you can log in it uh what are the best way to deleting a container first uh, procedure to stop the container using the following command uh okay and delete all container using the command the rm minus f or you can say this command delete all volumes with the following uh, commands and docker volume rm 
and restart uh, the container using other uh, commands. Uh, how many containers can you run uh, in a Docker? Um, what are the uh, factors? There is a no clearly defined limit. It means if you talk about one single node, how many uh, <coughs> uh, how many containers do you run? So there is a no certain a clearly defined limit to the number of the containers that can be run within a Docker. Um, but it's all depend upon the limitation or more specifically the hardware restriction that you have, okay? Uh, the size of the app and the CPU resources are available are the two important factors. Influencing the limits in um, the case that your application is uh, very, uh, very uh, big, you have a uh, abundant uh, resources, okay? Okay, guys. So our PPT has been finished. Now I have to go to uh, the real use case of that. I'll try to, um, I'll try to quickly. I'll take just five minutes break. I'll, there would be uh, at eighteen um, uh, twenty-five. I'll be back again. This hour eighteen thirty. Then we'll start uh, uh, this uh, section. And before going that, I just wanted to make sure uh everything is up and running so before that let me create the three new instances for you because it might take five minutes so let's reutilize this time so this is the aws environment first of all uh, i believe you are already aware about it uh, this is the aws environment that we are using it for the demonstration purpose Um, uh, Karthik, uh, apart from you, is uh, uh, anybody is uh, uh, not able to hear? Karthik Akela is not able to hear me. Anybody else is also facing the same issue? Um, please confirm if you guys are able to hear me. Swati, can you hear me? Okay. So, uh, so uh, Karthik, I believe that please check your uh, connection and network connection. I believe there is something, some is uh, some problems is there at your end. So you have to fix it. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm going to start a, a Linux system. Uh, I have specifically three system. I'm going to install it, and it's it might be uh, possible. I'll I'll also uh, teach you one thing. It might face you at your uh, uh, at your local environment as well. Uh, I'm going to get an error and will not able to start it or will not able to assess it. It because that's the problem. I also wanted to help you guys. If you guys are also facing the same issue, please. Um, okay, I'm using the existing rule and I believe it's a Docker security that I have created. Uh, Uh, previous uh, yep this is the these are the rule list that we require uh, for a okay before uh, I'll okay let me launch these first of all three instances okay and I'm using an existing key pair which is a kind of key venki that I'm going to be created. Okay, I'm using a key banky and let uh, the launch these, uh, I'm just waiting for the launch of these three instances. And after that, I'll be um, uh, coming and talking about the orchestration. Uh, what is the user in your uh, <coughs> real, pro um, real projects or what is the, the all orchestration is all about? What is uh, Docker Swarm is all about? What is the use of it? Okay, so give me five minutes. Now it's eighteen thirty. I'll be coming back again eighteen thirty-five, and I'll try to cover those stuff. Thank you. Hello, guys. I am back. Uh, please type yes if you are still there. Okay. So I'm just list uh, orchestrator. What are the orchestrator? Anybody can tell me what is the orchestrator in the context of uh, distributed uh, cloud environment? Anyone?
Am I audible? Just type yes, no, I'll proceed. Okay. So uh, now proceeding further, uh, I have to talk about what is the orchestration. Okay. And better if I'll let me figure it out if someone has a good image for you. So Google, let me Google it out. I hope uh, guys, this image is visible to you. I'll come to this image, but before uh, talking about this image, uh, I'll talk about the Kubernetes uh, or you can say any orchestrator system. And uh, specifically, I would be talking about what is the uh, real need of the orchestrator. Okay. <clears throat> um, you are a developer and uh, you have uh, know about now a Docker. Okay. And uh, you have also deployed your application well good in your server. Great. You have did a very great job. And this is deployed somewhere over here. And now the people are still trying to access it. Okay. But you were not aware about the scaling policy, scaling. Okay. And availability. Availability. Because uh, as a developer, you just deployed your code and deployed in a, some kind of server. Okay. And there is a no policy of the auto scaling. Suppose that. By the time it's a thousand users per minute, it's perfectly fine. But now the big billion days is going on. Uh, your uh, people are searching. Uh, people have start coming to your Flipkart or any of your shopping website. Okay, uh, this server will not able to handle that much particular load. Okay, and that will eventually go be crash it and you're not able to serve this kind of request or responses to uh, the users. And uh, as, a, as a result, there would be people are, uh, uh, people are, we are not able to uh, uh, get the better user experiences, okay? So how to deal with it, okay? So uh, not only this, uh, even if you have configured, let's say uh, three, four nodes that you have created it, okay? And, uh, uh, but uh, how, how to make sure that it's, it's, these are the nodes must be um, uh, alive all the time, or you can say it must be able to, or must be in the condition to respond something, okay? Now must be able to respond these requests, which are the key point coming. Okay, so tell me about the orchestration. So orchestration, any orchestration, there are the multiple, uh, for example, Kubernetes, this is also a one of the orchestrator tool. Second is that Docker Swarm that we'll talk about today. Docker Swarm. Okay. Docker Swarm is a very easy to configure. It, these are the quite difficult uh, as compared to Docker Swarm uh, architecture. So it's basically follow the master slave architecture where uh, the, any orchestration system is a main and key responsibility are there. Uh, you have to define uh, how many nodes uh, of a particular application that you want to run it, okay? Uh, what are the <clears throat> number of the resources or uh, number of the resources that you want to take uh, up and running all the time? Suppose that you have decided three. So what it does, it will uh, read your information, okay, through YAML file and create uh, <clears throat> three, uh, three, is, uh, three nodes for you. Not only the uh, nodes, it will make sure there is a, it will make sure that all the nodes are healthy and up and running and responding. Due to any reason, if it is, uh, uh, is, 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 is a down, let's say it's crashed due to some reason, due to application or any kind of reason, it will re-intentiate another uh, uh, instance immediately to make a uh, certain requirement, let's say three. So this is the all the responsibility of uh, any orchestrator tool. It's a kind of it, it maintains which you, which is basically the responsibility for the uh, availability of your um, uh, availability of your servers. So now this is the um, 
uh, it's a kind of uh, image that uh, is a uh, like a docker swarm follow okay so what it does is we having a kind of uh, uh, like a manager slave architecture uh, one manager must be there who's responsible of uh, taking care of the all the workers and these all managers are always in the sync it's not like that a, they know each other uh, <clears throat> workers uh, what are the status of workers are they up and running uh, are they down so if uh, suppose that uh, work this uh, worker this manager is down now and these are the, uh, these two workers these two workers are the responsible for the manager m1 okay now they will shift this information to some uh, other manager as well okay okay suppose that uh, server one server is down uh, it will take care of it uh, it will automatically spin up an issue uh, and command to create a new server so ultimately is that these are the managers who is managing the workers okay so th these are the basically and manager could be a, a worker as well so this is the pretty much high level architecture of uh, docker swarm Okay, let's start with, I believe these are the stances up and I'm running. I talked about one of the problem that will I am facing and uh, I have finally resolved it. Why uh, these are not working. Okay, so see, um, if we talked about MPuty, let me open M MPuty and then we'll see. Mm. Okay, so uh, I believe, uh, let me name it first, one by one, and then we'll create a... <clears throat> it's a quite slow at my end, I'm not sure why. Let's name it as D01, Docker01, it would be a master. Let's mark this as a, <clears throat> uh, I believe guys, my screen is shared, right? This is in the eye screen is shared. Okay. It's a D02. True. And it's D03. Okay. Now I'm trying to connect with this IP. So the problem that I'm talking about, what I have, I'm facing, and you might guys also face it. So um, as a D01, uh, D01, if I load this information, uh, now the new IP address would be this, and I save it, okay? And now can select. And now if I am going to connect this re, let's say do the reconnection, um, it's not going to be happen. And most probably it's giving me the connection timeout. <clears throat> let's close this, let's close this. Okay, let's close this as well. Okay, let me better for the better thing like um okay it's being which IP address uh properties file config and config is having again the session session is d1 load and let's see whether it's a it's a yeah it's a 235 and let's say open it's not going to be open anymore by why it's not being open let me tell you because i can i was struggling for a day uh, it's a local network providers they might block your ssh okay so once you start communicating through your mobile or mobile network look see i am not able to connect it over here the reason why i'm not able to connect it there is a potential reason 
if you have taken uh, an internet connection from a local service provider and they might have blocked this thing. So now I'm switching to, um, uh, give me a mobile here, give me that mobile. Yeah. And now I'm switching to the network. Uh, you guys might fa face some kind of lag in for some time, but I won't wanted to demonstrate this thing. Uh, and you will, might be able to face the same issue if you are doing SSH. Okay. Now let me <clears throat> switch to a mobile network and you guys uh, might face uh, some kind of, uh, you can say, uh, disconnection for a while. So I'm just connecting, just wait for a minute. Hello. Now I have switched to my another mobile and let's see whether I'm able to connect it. Yeah, see. The, so now I am connected through the, my mobile network. So this is the reason, this is a quite unexpected for me as well. Uh, so during the <coughs> discussion, I have found this thing. Okay. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Now let me edit uh, other other instances as well, but but, and then we'll try to con disconnect. Uh, okay, this is the D two. Okay, what is the public? This is the public IP, and let me talk about it's a D two uh, load again because these are the uh, I have saved it again okay now what about d3 <clears throat> let's copy these things as well and load and just talk about this thing and save it okay uh okay now let's again go to the empty accept it now go to the server 33, accept it. Um, okay, give me a minute. Okay, so I'm just going through uh, one of the <clears throat> a quick demonstration of the uh, Docker deployment, and then I'll try to um, deploy a uh, kind of uh, Docker Swarm, give you the example of the how the Docker Swarms works, and uh, then I'll try to close this uh, session. Okay, so first command would be a shui uh, sudo yum. Uh, every command I have to do it issue in all of the three uh, instances, and I'm doing a quite fast. Uh, this uh, recording would be available for you guys. If you want to revisit these things, you can. These are the set of the commands that uh, every, um, if you want to install the Docker. So these are the very basic commands. Okay. Uh, okay. I have to go through very quickly to wrap up this session. I have a very less time left. Uh, that's why. Okay. Um, we have to start the service before uh, it's a kind of daemon service with that we have to start. Uh, we have to start the service. Yes. Okay. I might, I hope I haven't missed anything. Yes. Yes, I believe I have missed something. Yeah. Yeah, now it's being there. I started the service as well. Now, uh, this is particular command that if you want to give the privilege to EC2 user, but uh, before that we have to log in and log out and that, that I, we are going, don't going to do it. So for the time being, we have to use the sudo. Uh, so uh, 
let me use the, to confirm that uh, we have installed Docker properly or not. So, um, S U B O sudo, and thereafter this command. Yeah, if we are getting this, it means we have installed perfectly. sudo docker info. Yeah, and let's me confirm me here as well. Yeah. Okay, now we are going to create a one quite good, uh, like in the Docker server one only. We are going to create an image and we'll try to access it outside of the world, whether uh, we are able to deploy our image or not. Okay, so I have just created a file which is known as Docker. And let me uh, do a kind of VI editor. VI editor, I'll open this particular file, let's say Docker file. And we can see, and uh, I'm just using a Docker uh, file, which is nothing but it's a uh, from Ubuntu. It is going to download Ubuntu, and it's the, then further it's going to do a kind of updates. Uh, it's a uh, app get updates and install the Apache. Uh, it will install the Apache, and it will create basically um, a file index.html, and there where we have a kind of message. Uh, that's it. That is going to be it. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, quit this file and come out of it. And now the command that we are going to issue is uh, we are just going to build this thing. We have to build uh, issue a Docker build command using let's say hello world. Okay. And the dot is represent we want. Uh, um, okay. Sorry. So we have to use the sudo. So as you see that the <clears throat> steps are being processed, start, start has been started and something is going to happen. Like uh, these are being uh, downloading something from repository and those kind of steps are being happening, right? Okay, so now we have to make sure uh, we have uh, created uh, like uh, uh, this kind of uh, image. So sudo, so we can see that we have a latest uh, and 42 seconds uh, before that we have did it. Okay, now not only this uh, things we have to uh, I believe we have to run this as well, okay? Then only we are going to access it outside of the world, okay? So let's, uh, we are tagging it and uh, we are creating it. And this means 8080 means that uh, our internal port of the Docker container is 80 and to access outside of the world is also an 8080, okay? Let's do it. Uh, sorry, again, I'm just forgetting one thing, sudo. We need a sudo to be executed, sudo, okay? And if this is message is coming, let it come, uh, come. that would not be an issue, okay? So let me try this, uh, how we are going to access it, uh, okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute, yep. So probably this is our the instance uh, D01. And the way we are going to uh, go to connect and go for this SSH. So this is nothing but a SSH URL. And let's try to access it through the HTTP. HTTP and then colon and then go for it. Yeah. Wow, so we have seen uh, without uh, writing a single code, we have seen that 
we have downloaded uh, through something uh, from uh, images and we have modified something and then we have did it okay now quickly i have to go through very quickly i have to go through a uh, creation of a uh, kind of creation of a, like a, a docker swarm how to create a docker swarm so it's a really a very difficult process <laughs> not actually very difficult but i show you a uh, very uh, few commands that we have to follow okay and let's start uh, go start with that so let's start with the um, just give me a minute let me uh, okay so first command which is docker swarm in it if we go to mi putty so it's a uh, first uh, it's basically uh, let's say rename it's a zero d01 d01 okay because and it's a uh, rename uh, d02 and thereafter it's a uh, uh, d03 okay and the command oh sorry i have to close this as well so command is the docker swarm in it okay so look after this if we want this is the command basically <clears throat> to join because it's we have made this server as a master node no in the figure that we have talked about we now this is a master node okay now go to the other servers uh i believe we have to just reconnect it and the similar way as well okay so what we have to issue we have to just issue uh, i believe we have to sudo and thereafter a token because they have share a token list it's a unique one you cannot re, uh, uh, it's a unique one so let's see that we have received a message uh, node joined a swarm okay and uh, in the same way we can it's also been we have to reconnect again and let's issue this particular command so the node has joined as a swarm worker okay now we have to proceed further we have if you want to know how which are the nodes are being registered with us so we have to go over here and we can see uh, as we can see uh, this is the leader first one is the leader that we have talked about and other two are the worker okay now we have to create a file that's we have talked about means uh, uh okay vi okay and uh, i have created uh, uh, it might be possible but these are not the working well but uh, the thing is that we have to understand the way how it's being working so it's a code with venki if you want to search it uh, uh, this video is all also available on the youtube channel of the code with venki uh, if you want you can see it and many other videos as well so we have created a one uh, vi docker compose file and thereafter uh, we are going to issue a, <clears throat> a few commands like so let's say let's see whether it's working or not so see we have uh, initiated a stack deployment c and creating the two services docker consumer docker test consumer and docker chef producers that we have created it okay and if we want to see where uh, the things are being installed uh, we can issue a uh, one by one commands so we can see docker test consumer docker test producer and these are the things are being over there okay and if we go for a command let's say uh, so these are the like <clears throat> uh, the, the, uh, this is the uh, consumer is being installed in uh, our server and let's see where it uh, actually and uh, the producer is being installed on uh, second server and uh, because we have made only one replica of it uh, nothing is being installed over there um, okay so uh, the thing uh, we have to go for it whether um, I'm 
pretty much sure it might not work but the thing is that this is the way we are going to um, deploy our uh, uh, like uh, in the swarms so let's see whether and uh, docker id if we have talked about okay 6b okay um we are getting kind of exceptions but the my main thing is that it tries to at least tries to communicate with the other server okay um i'll try to figure it out this error in the meanwhile but uh, this is uh, at least this is the way they are it might be some security issues or security groups that don't meet there so this is something like that uh, the error we have we still facing so guys if you have any questions uh, regarding this okay i'll wait for another 2 minutes please let me know okay otherwise we are going to close this session